Yoga, Sanskrit, yoga pronunciation, is a group of physical, mental, and spiritual practices or disciplines which originated in ancient India. Yoga is one of the six orthodox schools of Hindu philosophical traditions. There is a broad variety of yoga schools, practices, and goals in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. The term yoga in the Western world often denotes a modern form of hatha yoga, consisting largely of the postures called asanas. The origins of yoga have been speculated to date back to pre-Vedic Indian traditions, it is mentioned in the Rigveda, but most likely developed around the 6th and 5th centuries BCE, in ancient India's ascetic and sramana movements. The chronology of earliest texts describing yoga practices is unclear, varyingly credited to Upanishads. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali date from the first half of the first millennium CE, but only gained prominence in the West in the 20th century. Hatha Yoga texts emerged around the 11th century with origins in Tantra. Yoga gurus from India later introduced yoga to the West, following the success of Swami Vivekananda in the late 19th and early 20th century with his adaptation of yoga tradition, excluding asanas. In the 1980s, a very different form of modern yoga, with an increasing number of asanas and few other practices, became popular as a system of exercise across the Western world. Yoga in Indian traditions, however, is more than physical exercise, it has a meditative and spiritual core. One of the six major orthodox schools of Hinduism is also called yoga, which has its own epistemology and metaphysics, and is closely related to Hindu Samkhya philosophy. Many studies have tried to determine the effectiveness of modern yoga as a complementary intervention for cancer, schizophrenia, asthma, and heart disease. The results of these studies have been mixed and inconclusive. On December 1, 2016, yoga was listed by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. Topic: Etymology. The Sanskrit noun yoga yoga is derived from the root yuj, to attach, join, harness, yoke. The word yoga is cognate with English, yoke. The spiritual sense of the word yoga first arises in epic Sanskrit, in the second half of the first millennium BCE, and is associated with the philosophical system presented in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, with the chief aim of uniting the human spirit with the divine. The term Kriya Yoga has a technical meaning in the Yoga Sutras 2.1, designating the practical aspects of the philosophy, i.e. the union with the Supreme, due to performance of duties in everyday life. According to Panini, the term yoga can be derived from either of two roots, Yuhir Yoga to yoke or Yuj Samadhao, to concentrate. In the context of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the root yuj samadhao to concentrate is considered by traditional commentators as the correct etymology. In accordance with Panini, Vyasa who wrote the first commentary on the Yoga Sutras, states that yoga means samadhi concentration. .According to Dasgupta, the term yoga can be derived from either of two roots, you hear yoga, to yoke or Yuj Samadhao, to concentrate. Someone who practices yoga or follows the yoga philosophy with a high level of commitment is called a yogi may be applied to a man or a woman or yogini a woman. Topic. Definition in classic Indian texts 
The term yoga has been defined in various ways in the many different Indian philosophical and religious traditions. Topic: <laughs> Goals. The ultimate goal of yoga is moksha, liberation, although the exact definition of what form this takes depends on the philosophical or theological system with which it is conjugated. According to Jacobson, yoga has five principal meanings. A disciplined method for attaining a goal. Techniques of controlling the body and the mind. A name of a school or system of philosophy darsana, With prefixes such as hatha, mantra, and laya, traditions specializing in particular techniques of yoga. The goal of yoga practice, according to David Gordon White, from the 5th century CE onward, the core principles of yoga were more or less in place, and variations of these principles developed in various forms over time. A meditative means of discovering dysfunctional perception and cognition, as well as overcoming it for release from suffering, inner peace and salvation. Illustration of this principle is found in Hindu texts such as the Bhagavad Gita and Yoga Sutras, in a number of Buddhist Mahayana works, as well as Jain texts. The raising and expansion of consciousness from oneself to being coextensive with everyone and everything. These are discussed in sources such as in Hinduism Vedic literature and its epic Mahabharata, Jainism Prasamarata Prakarana, and Buddhist Nikaya texts. A path to omniscience and enlightened consciousness enabling one to comprehend the impermanent elusive, delusive and permanent true, transcendent reality. Examples are found in Hinduism Nyaya and Vaisesika school texts as well as Buddhism Madhyamaka texts, but in different ways. A technique for entering into other bodies, generating multiple bodies, and the attainment of other supernatural accomplishments, these are, states white, described in tantric literature of Hinduism and Buddhism, as well as the Buddhist Samanyafalasutta. James Mallinson, however, disagrees and suggests that such fringe practices are far removed from the mainstream yoga's goal as meditation-driven means to liberation in India. Indian religions, White clarifies that the last principle relates to legendary goals of yogi practice, different from practical goals of yoga practice, as they are viewed in South Asian thought and practice since the beginning of the Common Era, in the various Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain philosophical schools. Topic. History The origins of yoga are a matter of debate. There is no consensus on its chronology or specific origin other than that yoga developed in ancient India. Suggested origins are the Indus Valley Civilization BCE and pre-Vedic eastern states of India, the Vedic period 1500 to 500 BCE, and the Sramana movement. According to Gavin Flood, continuities may exist between those various traditions, T. His dichotomization is too simplistic, for continuities can undoubtedly be found between renunciation and Vedic Brahmanism, while elements from non-Brahmanical, Sramana traditions also played an important part in the formation of the renunciate ideal. Pre-philosophical speculations of yoga begin to emerge in the texts of c. 500 c. 200 BCE. Between 200 BCE and 500 CE, philosophical schools of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism were taking form and a coherent philosophical system of yoga began to emerge. The Middle Ages saw the development of many satellite traditions of yoga. 
Yoga came to the attention of an educated Western public in the mid-19th century along with other topics of Indian philosophy. Pre-Vedic India Yoga may have pre-Vedic elements. Some state yoga originated in the Indus Valley Civilization. Marshall, Iliadi and other scholars note that the Pashupati seal discovered in an Indus Valley Civilization site depicts a figure in a position resembling an asana used for meditation, Mulabandasana. This interpretation is considered speculative and uncertain by more recent analysis of Srinivasan and may be a case of projecting later practices into archaeological findings. Topic: <inaudible> Vedic period, 1700 to 500 BCE. According to Krangel, some researchers have favored a linear theory, which attempts to interpret the origin and early development of Indian contemplative practices as a sequential growth from an Aryan genesis. Just like traditional Hinduism regards the Vedas to be the ultimate source of all spiritual knowledge. Thomas McEvely favors a composite model where pre-Aryan yoga prototype existed in the pre-Vedic period and its refinement began in the Vedic period. Ascetic practices, concentration and bodily postures described in the Vedas may have been precursors to yoga. According to Jeffrey Samuel our best evidence to date suggests that yogic practices developed in the same ascetic circles as the early sramana movements Buddhists, Jainas and Ahivikas, probably in around the 6th and 5th centuries BCE. According to Zimmer, yoga philosophy is reckoned to be part of the non-Vedic system, which also includes the Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy, Jainism and Buddhism. Jainism does not derive from Brahman Aryan sources, but reflects the cosmology and anthropology of a much older pre-Aryan upper class of northeastern India, Bihar, being rooted in the same subsoil of archaic metaphysical speculation as yoga. Sankhya, and Buddhism, the other non-Vedic Indian systems. Topic. Textual references The first use of the root of the word, yoga, is in hymn 5.81.1 of the Rig Veda, a dedication to the rising sun god in the morning Savitri, where it has been interpreted as yoke or yogically control. The earliest evidence of yogis and yoga tradition is found in the Kesson hymn 10.136 of the Rigveda, states Carol Werner. The yogis of Vedic times left little evidence of their existence, practices and achievements. And such evidence as has survived in the Vedas is scanty and indirect. Nevertheless, the existence of accomplished yogis in Vedic times cannot be doubted. The Rigveda, however, does not describe yoga, and there is little evidence as to what the practices were. Early references to practices that later became part of yoga, are made in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, the earliest Hindu Upanishad. For example, the practice of pranayama consciously regulating breath is mentioned in hymn 1.5.23 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad c. 900 BCE, and the practice of pratyahara concentrating all of one's senses on self is mentioned in hymn 8.15 of Chandogya Upanishad c. 800-700 BCE. The Jaimaniya Upanishad Brahmana teaches mantra repetition and control of the breath. Topic. 
Topic: <inaudible> Vedic ascetic practices. Ascetic practices, tapas, concentration and bodily postures used by Vedic priests to conduct yajna sacrifice, might have been precursors to yoga. Vratya, a group of ascetics mentioned in the Atharvaveda, emphasized on bodily postures which may have evolved into yajic asanas. Early Samhitas also contain references to other group ascetics such as Munis, the Kesan, and Vratyas. Techniques for controlling breath and vital energies are mentioned in the Brahmanas, texts of the Vedic corpus, c. 1000 to 800 BCE, and the Atharvaveda. Nasadiya Sukta of the Rig Veda suggests the presence of an early contemplative tradition. Topic: Preclassical Era, 500 to 200 BCE. Systematic yoga concepts begin to emerge in the texts of C. 500 to 200 BCE, such as the early Buddhist texts, the Middle Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, and Shanti Parva of the Mahabharata. Topic. Buddhism and Sramana movement According to Jeffrey Samuel, R. Best evidence to date suggests that yogic practices developed in the same ascetic circles as the early Sramana movements Buddhists, Jainas and Ahivikas, probably in around the 6th and 5th centuries BCE. This occurred during what is called the Second Urbanization Period. According to Mallinson and Singleton, these traditions were the first to use psychophysical techniques, mainly known as dhyana and tapas, but later described as yoga, to strive for the goal of liberation, moksha, nirvana from samsara, the round of rebirth, Werner states. The Buddha was the founder of his yoga system, even though, admittedly, he made use of some of the experiences he had previously gained under various yoga teachers of his time. He notes, But it is only with Buddhism itself as expounded in the Pali Canon that we can speak about a systematic and comprehensive or even integral school of yoga practice, which is thus the first and oldest to have been preserved for us in its entirety. The early Buddhist texts describe yogic and meditative practices, some of which the Buddha borrowed from the Sramana tradition. The Pali Canon contains three passages in which the Buddha describes pressing the tongue against the palate for the purposes of controlling hunger or the mind, depending on the passage. However, there is no mention of the tongue being inserted into the Nasopharynx as in true Kakari Mudra. The Buddha used a posture where pressure is put on the perineum with the heel, similar to even modern postures used to stimulate kundalini. Some of the major suttas that discuss yogic practice include the Satipatthana Sutta, four foundations of mindfulness sutta, and the Anapanasati Sutta, mindfulness of breathing sutta. The chronology of completion of these yoga-related early Buddhist texts, however, is unclear, just like ancient Hindu texts. Early known Buddhist sources like the Majjhima Nikaya mention meditation, while the Anguttara Nikaya describes Jayans meditators that resemble early Hindu descriptions of Muni, Kesans and meditating ascetics, but these meditation practices are not called yoga in these texts. The earliest known specific discussion of yoga in the Buddhist literature, as understood in modern context are from the later Buddhist Yogacara and Theravada schools, a yoga system that predated the Buddhist school as Jain Yoga. But since Jain sources postdate Buddhist ones, it is difficult to distinguish between the nature of the early Jain school and elements derived from other schools. 
Most of the other contemporary yoga systems alluded in the Upanishads and some Buddhist texts are lost to time. Topic: <laughs> Uncertainty with chronology. Alexander Wynne observes that formless meditation and elemental meditation might have originated in the Upanishadic tradition. The earliest reference to meditation is in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, one of the oldest Upanishads. Chandogya Upanishad describes the five kinds of vital energies prana. Concepts used later in many yoga traditions such as internal sound and veins are also described in the Upanishad. Taittiriya Upanishad defines yoga as the mastery of body and senses. Topic: <inaudible> Upanishads. The first known appearance of the word yoga, with the same meaning as the modern term, is in the Katha Upanishad, probably composed between the 5th and 3rd century BCE, where it is defined as the steady control of the senses, which along with cessation of mental activity, leading to a supreme state. Katha Upanishad integrates the monism of early Upanishads with concepts of Samkhya and Yoga. It defines various levels of existence according to their proximity to the innermost being Atman. Yoga is therefore seen as a process of interiorization or ascent of consciousness. It is the earliest literary work that highlights the fundamentals of yoga. White states, the earliest extant systematic account of yoga and a bridge from the earlier Vedic uses of the term is found in the Hindu Katha Upanishad Ku, a scripture dating from about the 3rd century BCE, i.t. describes the hierarchy of mind-body constituents—the senses, mind, intellect, etc that comprise the foundational categories of Samkhya philosophy, whose metaphysical system grounds the yoga of the Yoga Sutras, Bhagavad Gita, and other texts and schools Ku 3.10-11, The hymns in Book 2 of the Shvetashvatara Upanishad, another late 1st millennium BCE text, states a procedure in which the body is held in upright posture, the breath is restrained and mind is meditatively focused, preferably inside a cave or a place that is simple, plain, of silence or gently flowing water, with no noises nor harsh winds. The Maitrayaniya Upanishad, likely composed in a later century than Katha and Shvetashvatara Upanishads but before Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, mentions sixfold yoga method, breath control pranayama, introspective withdrawal of senses pradyahara, meditation dhyana, mind concentration dharana, philosophical inquiry, creative reasoning tarka, and absorption, intense spiritual union samadhi, in addition to the yoga discussion in above principal Upanishads, twenty yoga Upanishads as well as related texts such as Yoga Vasistha, composed in 1st and 2nd millennium CE, discuss yoga methods. Topic. Macedonian historical texts Alexander the Great reached India in the 4th century BCE. Along with his army, he took Greek academics with him who later wrote memoirs about geography, people and customs they saw. One of Alexander's companion was Onesicritus, quoted in Book 15, sections 63–65 by Strabo, who describes yogins of India. Onesicritus claims those Indian yogins Mandanis practiced aloofness and different postures, standing or sitting or lying naked, and motionless. 
Onesicritus also mentions his colleague Calanus trying to meet them, who is initially denied audience, but later invited because he was sent by a king curious of wisdom and philosophy. Onesicritus and Calanus learn that the Yogans consider the best doctrine of life as rid the spirit of not only pain, but also pleasure. That man trains the body for toil in order that his opinions may be strengthened. That there is no shame in life on frugal fare. And that the best place to inhabit is one with scantiest equipment or outfit. These principles are significant to the history of spiritual side of yoga. These may reflect the ancient roots of undisturbed calmness and mindfulness through balance. In later works of Hindu Patanjali and Buddhist Buddhahosa respectively, states Charles Rockwell Landman, as well as the principle of aparagraha non-possessiveness, non-craving, simple living and asceticism discussed in later Hinduism and Jainism. Topic. Mahabharata and Bhagavad Gita Description of an early form of yoga called Narodiyoga yoga of cessation is contained in the Mokshadharma section of the 12th chapter Shanti Parva of the Mahabharata 3rd century BCE. Narodiyoga emphasizes progressive withdrawal from the contents of empirical consciousness such as thoughts, sensations etc. until purusha self is realized. Terms like vachara subtle reflection, viveka discrimination and others which are similar to Patanjali's terminology are mentioned, but not described. There is no uniform goal of yoga mentioned in the Mahabharata. Separation of self from matter, perceiving Brahman everywhere, entering into Brahman etc. are all described as goals of yoga. Samkhya and yoga are conflated together and some verses describe them as being identical. Mokshadharma also describes an early practice of elemental meditation. Mahabharata defines the purpose of yoga as the experience of uniting the individual Atman with the universal Brahman that pervades all things. The Bhagavad Gita Song of the Lord is part of the Mahabharata and also contains extensive teachings on yoga. According to According to Mallinson and Singleton, the Gita seeks to appropriate yoga from the renunciate milieu in which it originated, teaching that it is compatible with worldly activity carried out according to one's caste and life stage, it is only the fruits of one's actions that are to be renounced." In addition to an entire chapter ch. 6 dedicated to traditional yoga practice including meditation it introduces three prominent types of yoga karma yoga the yoga of action bhakti yoga the yoga of devotion jnana yoga the yoga of knowledge the gita consists of 18 chapters and 700 slokas verses with each chapter named as a different yoga thus delineating 18 different yogas some scholars divide the Gita into three sections, with the first six chapters with 280 slokas dealing with karma yoga, the middle six containing 209 slokas with bhakti yoga, and the last six chapters with 211 slokas as jnana yoga. However, this is rough because elements of karma, bhakti, and jnana are found in all chapters. Topic. Philosophical sutras Yoga is discussed in the ancient foundational sutras of Hindu philosophy. 
the Vaisesika Sutra of the Vaisheshika school of Hinduism, dated to have been composed sometime between 6th and 2nd century BCE discusses yoga. According to Johannes Bronckhorst, an Indologist known for his studies on early Buddhism and Hinduism and a professor at the University of Lausanne, Vaisesika Sutra describes yoga as a state where the mind resides only in the soul and therefore not in the senses. This is equivalent to pratyahara or withdrawal of the senses, and the ancient sutra asserts that this leads to an absence of sukha happiness and dukkha suffering, then describes additional yogic meditation steps in the journey towards the state of spiritual liberation. Similarly, Brahma Sutras, the foundational text of the Vedanta school of Hinduism, discusses yoga in its Sutra 2.1.3. 2.1.223 and others. Brahma Sutras are estimated to have been complete in the surviving form sometime between 450 BCE to 200 CE, and its sutras assert that yoga is a means to gain subtlety of body and other powers. The Nyaya Sutras, the foundational text of the Nyaya school, variously estimated to have been composed between the 6th century BCE and 2nd century CE, discusses yoga in Sutras 4.2.38-50. This ancient text of the Nyaya school includes a discussion of yogic ethics, dhyana, meditation, samadhi, and among other things remarks that debate and philosophy as a form of yoga. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical era, 200 BCE to 500 CE. During the period between the Mauryan and the Gupta eras, c. 200 BCE to 500 CE, the Indic traditions of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism were taking form, and coherent systems of yoga began to emerge. This period witnessed many new texts from these traditions discussing and systematically compiling yoga methods and practices. Some key works of this era include the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the Yoga Yajñavakya, the Yoga Karabhumi Sastra and the Visuddhimagga. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. One of the best known early expressions of Brahmanical yoga thought is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the original name of which may have been the Patanjali Yoga Sastra Samkhya Pravakana, c. sometime between 325 to 425, which some scholars now believe included both the sutras and a commentary. As the name suggests, the metaphysical basis for this text is the Indian philosophy termed Samkhya. This atheistic school is mentioned in Kautilya's Arthashastra as one of the three categories of Anviksikas philosophies along with Yoga and Karvaka. The two schools have some differences as well. Yoga accepted the conception of personal God. While Samkhya developed as a rationalist, non-theistic, atheistic system of Hindu philosophy. Sometimes Patanjali's system is referred to as Seshvara Samkhya in contradistinction to Kapila's Niravara Samkhya. The parallels between Yoga and Samkhya were so close that Max Muller says that the two philosophies were in popular parlance distinguished from each other as Samkhya with and Samkhya without a lord." Carol Werner argued that the process of systematization of yoga which began in the middle and early Yoga Upanishads culminated with the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. The Yoga Sutras are also influenced by the Sramana traditions of Buddhism and Jainism, and may represent a further Brahmanical attempt to adopt yoga from the Sramana traditions. 
As noted by Larson, there are numerous parallels in the concepts in ancient Samkhya, Yoga and Abhidharma Buddhist schools of thought, particularly from 2nd century BCE to 1st century AD. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras is a synthesis of these three traditions. From Samkhya, the Yoga Sutras adopt the reflective discernment. Ajavasaya of Prakriti and Purusha dualism, its metaphysical rationalism, as well its three epistemic methods of gaining reliable knowledge. From Abhidharma Buddhism's idea of Niradhasamadhi, suggests Larson, Yoga Sutras adopt the pursuit of altered state of awareness, but unlike Buddhism's concept of no self nor soul, Yoga is physicalist and realist like Samkhya in believing that each individual has a self and soul. The third concept Yoga Sutras synthesize into its philosophy is the ancient ascetic traditions of meditation and introspection, as well as the yoga ideas from middle Upanishads such as Katha, Shvetashvatara and Maitri. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras are widely regarded as the first compilation of the formal yoga philosophy. The verses of the Yoga Sutras are terse. Many later Indian scholars studied them and published their commentaries, such as the Vyasa Beshya c. 350-450 CE. Patanjali defines the word yoga in his second sutra. Yogascitavrti Niradha Yogas Sata Virti Niradha Yoga Sutras 1.2 this terse definition hinges on the meaning of three Sanskrit terms. I. K. Taimni translates it as, Yoga is the inhibition of the modifications of the mind. Swami Vivekananda translates the sutra as, Yoga is restraining the mind stuff from taking various forms. Edwin Bryant explains that, to Patanjali, "...yoga essentially consists of meditative practices culminating in attaining a state of consciousness free from all modes of active or discursive thought, and of eventually attaining a state where consciousness is unaware of any object external to itself." that is, is only aware of its own nature as consciousness unmixed with any other object." If the meaning of yoga is understood as the practice of naroda mental control, then its goal is, "...the unqualified state of naroda, the perfection of that process," according to Baba Hari Das. In that context, Yoga union implies duality as in joining of two things or principles, the result of yoga is the nandal state. And, as the union of the lower self and higher self, the nandal state is characterized by the absence of individuality, it can be described as eternal peace, pure love, self-realization, or liberation. Patanjali's writing also became the basis for a system referred to as Ashtanga Yoga, Eight Limbed Yoga. This eight limbed concept is derived from the 29th Sutra of the Book 2 of Yoga Sutras. They are Yama, the five abstentions, Ahimsa, non violence, non harming other living beings, Satya, truthfulness, non falsehood, Asteya, non stealing, Brahmacharya, celibacy, fidelity to one's partner, and Aparagraha, non avarice, non possessiveness. Niyama, the five observances. Saka purity, clearness of mind, speech and body, santasha contentment, acceptance of others and of one's circumstances, tapas persistent meditation, perseverance, austerity, svadaya study of self, self-reflection, study of Vedas, and Ishvara pranadana contemplation of God, supreme being, true self. 
Asana literally means seat, and in Patanjali's sutras refers to the seated position used for meditation. Pranayama, breath exercises. Prana, breath. Ayama, two. Stretch, extend, restrain, stop. Pratyahara, abstraction, withdrawal of the sense organs from external objects. Dharana, concentration, fixing the attention on a single object. Dhyana, meditation, intense contemplation of the nature of the object of meditation. Samadhi, liberation, merging consciousness with the object of meditation. In later Hindu scholasticism, 12th century onwards, yoga became the name of one of the six orthodox philosophical schools, darsanas, which refers to traditions that accept the testimony of Vedas. Topic: <laughs> Yoga and Vedanta. Yoga and Vedanta are the two largest surviving schools of Hindu traditions. They share many thematic principles, concepts and belief in self, soul, but diverge in degree, style and some of their methods. Epistemologically, yoga school accepts three means to reliable knowledge, while Advaita Vedanta accepts six ways. Yoga disputes the monism of Advaita Vedanta. Yoga school believes that in the state of moksha, each individual discovers the blissful, liberating sense of himself or herself as an independent identity. Advaita Vedanta, in contrast, believes that in the state of moksha, each individual discovers the blissful, liberating sense of himself or herself as part of oneness with everything, everyone, and the universal self. They both hold that the free conscience is aloof yet transcendent, liberated and self-aware. Further, Advaita Vedanta school enjoins the use of Patanjali's yoga practices and the reading of Upanishads for those seeking the supreme good, ultimate freedom and jivanmukti. The Yoga Yajnavalka is a classical treatise on yoga attributed to the Vedic sage Yajnavalka. It takes the form of a dialogue between Yajnavalka and Gargi, a renowned philosopher. The text contains twelve chapters and its origin has been traced to the period between the 2nd century BCE and 4th century CE. Many yoga texts like the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the Yoga Kundalini and the Yoga Tattva Upanishads have borrowed verses from or make frequent references to the Yoga Yajnavalka. The Yoga Yajnavalka discusses eight yoga asanas, swastika, gomuka, padma, vira, simha, bhadra, mukta and mayura, numerous breathing exercises for body cleansing, and meditation. <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhist Abhidharma and Yogacara The Buddhist tradition of Abhidharma developed various treatises which further expanded teachings on Buddhist phenomenological theory and yogic techniques. These had a profound influence on Buddhist traditions such as the Mahayana and the Theravada. During the Gupta period 4th to 5th centuries, a movement of northern Mahayana Buddhism termed Yogacara began to be systematized with the writings of the Buddhist scholars Asanga and Vasubandhu. Yogacara Buddhism received the name as it provided a yoga, a systematic framework for engaging in the practices that lead through the path of the bodhisattva towards awakening and full Buddhahood. 
Its teachings can be found in the comprehensive and encyclopedic work, the Yogacarabhumi Sastra treatise on the foundation for yoga practitioners, which was also translated into Tibetan and Chinese and thus exerted a profound influence on the East Asian Buddhist and Tibetan Buddhist traditions. According to Mallinson and Singleton, the study of Yogacara Buddhism is essential for the understanding of yoga's early history, and its teachings influenced the text of the Patanjali Yogasastra. Like the Northern tradition, the South India and Sri Lankan based Theravada school also developed manuals for yogic and meditative training, mainly the Vimitimaga and the Visuddhimagga. Topic. Jainism According to Tattvarthasutra, 2nd century CE Jain text, yoga is the sum of all the activities of mind, speech and body. Umasvati calls yoga the cause of asrava, or karmic influx as well as one of the essentials, samyak karitra, in the path to liberation. In his Niyamasara, Akarya Kundakunda, describes Yoga Bhakti — devotion to the path to liberation — as the highest form of devotion. Akarya Haribhadra and Akarya Hemakandra mention the five major vows of ascetics and twelve minor vows of laity under Yoga. This has led certain Indologists like Prof. Robert J. Zeidenbos to call Jainism, essentially, a system of yogic thinking that grew into a full-fledged religion. The five yamas or the constraints of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali bear a resemblance to the five major vows of Jainism, indicating a history of strong cross-fertilization between these traditions. Mainstream Hinduism's influence on Jain Yoga can be seen in Haribhadra's Yogadarsti Samakaya, which outlines an eightfold yoga influenced by Patanjali's eightfold yoga. Topic: Middle Ages, 500 CE. Middle Ages saw the development of many satellite traditions of yoga. Hatha yoga emerged in this period. Topic: Bhakti movement. The Bhakti movement was a development in medieval Hinduism which advocated the concept of a personal god or supreme personality of Godhead. The movement was initiated by the Alvars of South India in the 6th to 9th centuries, and it started gaining influence throughout India by the 12th to 15th centuries. Shaiva and Vaishnava bhakti traditions integrated aspects of Yoga Sutras, such as the practical meditative exercises, with devotion. Bhagavata Purana elucidates the practice of a form of yoga called Varaha separation bhakti. Varaha bhakti emphasizes one-pointed concentration on Krishna. Topic. Hindu Tantra Tantra is a range of esoteric traditions that began to arise in India no later than the 5th century CE. George Samuel states, Tantra is a contested term, but may be considered as a school whose practices appeared in mostly complete form in Buddhist and Hindu texts by about 10th century CE. Tantric texts include yogic techniques, as well as complex rituals, the use of mantras, devotion towards particular deities and various other practices. Tantric yoga developed complex visualizations which included meditation on the body as a microcosm of the cosmos. They included also the use of mantras, pranayama, and the manipulation of the subtle body, including its nadis and chakras. 
One of the most popular models of the Hindu tantric body is that of the Kubjikamata Tantra, 10th century, in which six power centers or chakras of the subtle body is seen as six forms of the goddess Kubjika and her consort. This tantra also contains a teaching on the goddess Kundalini, which resides at the base of the spine and through certain visualization exercises may be made to rise up through the central channel to the crown of the head where she is united with Shiva. These teachings on chakras and kundalini would become central to later forms of Indian yoga. Over its history, some ideas of Tantra school influenced the Hindu, Bon, Buddhist, and Jain traditions. Elements of Tantric yoga rituals were adopted by and influenced state functions in medieval Buddhist and Hindu kingdoms in East and Southeast Asia. By the turn of the first millennium, Hatha Yoga emerged from Tantra. Vajrayana and Tibetan Buddhism Vajrayana is also known as Tantric Buddhism and Tantrayana. Its texts were compiled starting with 7th century and Tibetan translations were completed in 8th century CE. These Tantra Yoga texts were the main source of Buddhist knowledge that was imported into Tibet. They were later translated into Chinese and other Asian languages, helping spread ideas of Tantric Buddhism. The Buddhist text Hevajra Tantra and Karyagiti introduced hierarchies of chakras. Yoga is a significant practice in Tantric Buddhism. The Tantra yoga practices include asanas and breathing exercises. The Nyingma tradition practices Yantra Yoga tib. Trul core. A discipline that includes breath work or pranayama, meditative contemplation and other exercises. In the Nyingma tradition, the path of meditation practice is divided into further stages, such as Kriya Yoga, Upa Yoga, Yoga Yana, Maha Yoga, Anu Yoga and Ati Yoga. The Sarma traditions also include Kriya, Upa, called Charya and yoga, with the Anatara yoga class substituting for Mahayoga and Adiyoga. <inaudible> Zen Buddhism Zen, the name of which derives from the Sanskrit, Dhyana, via the Chinese, Chan, is a form of Mahayana Buddhism. Yoga practices integrally exist within the Zen Buddhist school. Topic: <laughs> Hatha Yoga. The earliest references to Hatha Yoga are in Buddhist works dating from the 8th century. The earliest definition of Hatha Yoga is found in the 11th century Buddhist text Vimalaprabha, which defines it in relation to the center channel, Bindu etc. Hatha Yoga synthesizes elements of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras with posture and breathing exercises. It marks the development of asanas plural, into the full body postures, now in popular usage and, along with its many modern variations, is the style that many people associate with the word yoga today. <laughs> Sikhism Various yogic groups had become prominent in Punjab in the 15th and 16th century, when Sikhism was in its nascent stage. Compositions of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, describe many dialogues he had with Jogis, a Hindu community which practiced yoga. Guru Nanak rejected the austerities, rites and rituals connected with Hatha Yoga. He propounded the path of Sahaja Yoga or Nama Yoga meditation on the name instead. The Guru Granth Sahib states, 
Listen, O oh yogi, Nanak tells nothing but the truth. You must discipline your mind. The devotee must meditate on the word divine. It is his grace which brings about the union. He understands, he also sees. Good deeds help one merge into divination. Topic: <laughs> Modern Revival. Topic: <laughs> 19th Century Yoga Philosophy. Yoga came to the attention of an educated Western public in the mid-19th century along with other topics of Indian philosophy. In the context of this budding interest, N. C. Paul published his treatise on yoga philosophy in 1851, the first Hindu teacher to actively advocate and disseminate aspects of yoga, not including asanas, to a Western audience, Swami Vivekananda, toward Europe and the United States in the 1890s. The reception which Swami Vivekananda received built on the active interest of intellectuals, in particular the New England transcendentalists, among them Ralph Waldo Emerson (1803–1882), who drew on German Romanticism and the interest of philosophers and scholars like G. W. F. Hegel (1770–1831). The brothers August Wilhelm Schlegel (1767–1845) and Carl Wilhelm Friedrich Schlegel (1772–1829), Max Müller (1823–1900), Arthur Schopenhauer (1788–1860), and others who had, to varying degrees, interests in things Indian. Theosophists also had a large influence on the American public public's view of yoga. Esoteric views current at the end of the 19th century provided a further basis for the reception of Vedanta and of yoga with its theory and practice of correspondence between the spiritual and the physical. The reception of yoga and of Vedanta thus entwined with each other and with the mostly Neoplatonism based currents of religious and philosophical reform and transformation throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. Mircea Iliadi brought a new element into the reception of yoga with the strong emphasis on Tantric yoga in his seminal book, Yoga, Immortality and Freedom. With the introduction of the Tantra traditions and philosophy of yoga, the conception of the transcendent to be attained by yogic practice shifted from experiencing the transcendent Atman Brahman in Advaitic theory in the mind to the body itself. Topic: 20th century practice. Outside the Buddhist, Hindu and Jain traditions in Asia, the term yoga has from the 1960s usually been synonymous with its asanas postures, in other words as a form of exercise. This aspect of yoga was adopted as a cultural trend in Europe and North America starting in the first half of the 20th century. There were periods of criticism and paranoia against yoga as well. Yoga, in particular the use of asanas, was made more acceptable by N. C. Paul and Major D. Basu in the late 19th century, and then continued in the 20th century with Sri Yogendra and Swami Kuvalayananda. Western medical researchers came to Swami Kuvalayananda's Kaivalyadama Health and Yoga Research Center, starting in 1928, to study yoga as a science. By the 1960s, Western interest in Hindu spirituality reached its peak, giving rise to many neo Hindu schools specifically adapted to a Western public. 
During this period, most of the influential Indian teachers of yoga came from two lineages, those of Sivananda Saraswati (1887–1963) and of Tirumalai Krishnamacharya (1888–1989). Teachers of Hatha Yoga who were active in the West in this period included B.K.S. Iyengar (1918–2014) and K. Patabi Joys (1915–2009), both pupils of Krishnamacharya, Swami Vishnu Devananda (1927–1993) and Swami Sachidananda (1914–2002). Yogi Bhajan brought Kundalini Yoga to the United States in 1969. Comprehensive, classical teachings of Ashtanga Yoga, Samkhya, the subtle body theory, fitness asanas, and tantric elements were included in the yoga teacher's training by Baba Hari Das 1923, in the United States and Canada, a second, Yoga Boom. Followed in the 1980s, as Dean Ornish, a follower of Swami Sachidananda, connected yoga to heart health, legitimizing yoga as a purely physical system of health exercises outside of counter culture or esotericism circles, and unconnected to any religious denomination. Numerous asanas are modern in origin, strongly overlapping with 19th and early 20th century Indian and Western exercise traditions. Since 2001, yoga has greatly increased in popularity around the world. For example, the number of people who practiced some form of yoga in America grew from 4 million in 2001 to 20 million in 2011, attracting support from world leaders such as Barack Obama. Topic: Traditions. Yoga is practiced with a variety of methods by all Indian religions. In Hinduism, practices include jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, karma yoga, laya yoga and hatha yoga. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical yoga. What is often referred to as classical yoga or astanga yoga, yoga of eight limbs, is mainly the type of yoga outlined in the highly influential Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. The origins of the classical yoga tradition are unclear, though early discussions of the term appear in the Upanishads. The name Raja Yoga. Yoga of Kings originally denoted the ultimate goal of yoga, samadhi, but was popularized by Vivekananda as a common name for Ashtanga Yoga, the eight limbs to be practiced to attain samadhi, as described in the Yoga Sutras. Yoga is also considered as one of the orthodox philosophical schools darsanas of Hinduism, those which accept the Vedas as source of knowledge. Classical yoga incorporates epistemology, metaphysics, ethical practices, systematic exercises, and self development techniques for body, mind, and spirit. Its epistemology pramana and metaphysics is similar to that of the Sankhya school. The metaphysics of classical yoga, like Sankhya, is mainly dualistic, positing that there are two distinct realities. These are prakriti, nature, which is the eternal and active unconscious source of the material world and is composed of three gunas, and the purusas, persons, the plural consciousnesses which are the intelligent principles of the world, and are multiple, inactive and eternal witnesses. Each person has an individual purusha, which is their true self, the witness and the enjoyer, and that which is liberated. This metaphysical system holds that purusas undergo cycles of reincarnation through its interaction and identification with prakriti. 
Liberation. The goal of this system results from the isolation kaivalya of Purusha from Prakriti, and is achieved through a meditation which detaches oneself from the different forms tattvas of Prakriti. This is done by stilling one's thought waves satavriti and resting in pure awareness of Purusha. Unlike the Sankhya school of Hinduism, which pursues a non-theistic, atheistic rationalist approach, the Yoga school of Hinduism accepts the concept of a «personal, yet essentially inactive, deity» or «personal god» Isvara. Buddhist Yoga Buddhist yoga encompasses an extensive variety of methods that aim to develop key virtues or qualities known as the 37 aids to awakening. The ultimate goal of Buddhist yoga is bodhi awakening or nirvana cessation, which is traditionally seen as the permanent end of suffering dukkha and rebirth. Buddhist texts use numerous terms for spiritual praxis besides yoga, such as bhavana development, and jhana dhyana. In early Buddhism, various yogic practices were taught, including the four dhyanas, four meditations or mental absorptions, the four satipatthanas, foundations or establishments of mindfulness. Anapanasati mindfulness of breath the four immaterial dwellings supranormal states of mind the brahmaviharas divine abodes anasati contemplations recollections these meditations were seen as being supported by the other elements of the eightfold path such as the practice of ethics right exertion sense restraint and right view Two mental qualities are said to be indispensable for yogic practice in Buddhism: samatha, calm, stability, and vipassana, insight, clear seeing. Samatha is the quality of a stable, relaxed, and calm mind. It is also associated with samadhi, mental unification, focus, and dhyana, a state of meditative absorption. Vipassana meanwhile, is a kind of insight or penetrative understanding into the true nature of phenomena. It is also defined as, "...seeing things as they truly are." Yathabudam darshanam. The true nature of things is defined and explained in different ways, but an important and unique feature of classical Buddhism is its understanding of all phenomena dhammas as being empty of a self atman or inherent essence, a doctrine termed anatta not self, and sunyata emptiness. This is in sharp contrast with most other Indian traditions, whose goals are founded either on the idea of an individual soul Atman, Jiva, Purusha, or a universal monistic consciousness Brahman. Vipassana also requires an understanding of suffering or dukkha and thus the Four Noble Truths, impermanence anicca, and interdependent origination. Later developments in the various Buddhist traditions led to new innovations in yogic practices. The Theravada school, while remaining relatively conservative, still developed new ideas on meditation and yogic phenomenology in their later works, the most influential of which is the Visuddhimagga. The Indic meditation teachings of Mahayana Buddhism can be seen in influential texts like the Yogacarabhumi Sastra compiled c. 4th century. Mahayana meditation practices also developed and adopted new yogic methods, such as the use of mantra and dharani, pure land practices which aimed at rebirth in a pure land or Buddha field, and visualization methods. Chinese Buddhism developed its own methods, such as the Chan practice of koan introspection and Hua Tou. 
Likewise, Tantric Buddhism also Mantrayana, Vajrayana, developed and adopted Tantric methods, which remain the basis of the Tibetan Buddhist yogic systems, including the six yogas of Naropa, Kalachakra, Mahamudra and Dzogchen. Topic. Jain Yoga Jain Yoga has been a central practice in Jainism. Jain spirituality is based on a strict code of nonviolence or ahimsa, which includes vegetarianism, alms giving, dana, right faith in the three jewels, the practice of austerities, tapas, such as fasting, and yogic practices. Jain Yoga aims at the liberation and purification of the self atma or soul jiva from the forces of karma, which keep all souls bound to the cycle of transmigration. Like Yoga and Sankhya, Jainism believes in a multiplicity of individual souls which bound by their individual karma. Only through the reduction of karmic influxes and the exhaustion of one's collected karma can a soul become purified and released, at which point one becomes an omniscient being who has reaches absolute knowledge. Kavala Jnana, the early practice of Jain Yoga seems to have been divided into several types, including meditation dhyana, abandonment of the body kayatsarga, contemplation anupreksa, and reflection bhavana. Some of the earliest sources for Jain Yoga are the Uttaradhyayana Sutra, the Avasyaka Sutra, the Stananga Sutra c. 2nd century BCE. Later works include Kundakunda's Varasa Anaveka, 12 contemplations, c. 1st century BCE to 1st century CE, Haribhadra's Yogadarshtisamukhya, 8th century, and the Yoga Sastra of Himachandra, 12th century. Later forms of Jain Yoga adopted Hindu influences, such as ideas from Patanjali's Yoga and later Tantric Yoga in the works of Haribhadra and Himachandra respectively. The Jains also developed a progressive path to liberation through yogic praxis, outlining several levels of virtue called Gunasthanas. In the modern era, new forms of Jain meditation have also been developed. One of the most influential ones is the Preksa system of Akarya Mahaprajna which is eclectic and includes the use of mantra, breath control, mudras, bandhas, and so on. Topic. Yoga in Advaita Vedanta Vedanta is a varied tradition with numerous sub-schools and philosophical views. Vedanta focuses on the study of the Upanishads, and one of its early texts, the Brahma Sutras. Regarding yoga or mediation, the Brahma Sutras focuses on gaining spiritual knowledge of Brahman, the unchanging absolute reality or self. One of the earliest and most influential sub traditions of Vedanta is Advaita Vedanta, which posits non dualistic monism. This tradition emphasizes Jnana Yoga, yoga of knowledge, which is aimed at realizing the identity of one's Atman, soul, individual consciousness with Brahman, the absolute consciousness. The most influential thinker of this school is Adi Shankara, 8th century, who wrote various commentaries and original works which teach Jnana Yoga. In Advaita Vedanta, Jnana is attained on the basis of scripture sruti, and one's guru and through a process of listening sravana, to teachings, thinking and reflecting on them manana, and finally meditating on these teachings nididyasana, in order to realize their truth. It is also important to develop qualities such as discrimination vivaka, renunciation viraga, tranquility, temperance, dispassion, endurance, faith, attention and a longing for knowledge and freedom Yoga in Advaita is ultimately a 
meditative exercise of withdrawal from the particular and identification with the universal, leading to contemplation of oneself as the most universal, namely, consciousness. An influential text which teaches yoga from an Advaita perspective of non-dualistic idealism is the Yoga Vasistha. This work uses numerous short stories and anecdotes to illustrate its main ideas. It teaches seven stages or bhumis of yogic practice. It was a major reference for medieval Advaita Vedanta yoga scholars and before the 12th century, it was one of the most popular texts on Hindu yoga. Another text which teaches yoga with an Advaita point of view is the Yoga Yajñavakya. This work contains extensive teachings on ten yamas ethical rules and ten niyamas duties, and eight asanas. It also discusses a theory of nadis and prana vital breath, and follows this with instructions on pranayama breath control, pratyahara sense withdrawal, meditation on mantras, meditative visualizations and kundalini. Topic. Bhakti Yoga Bhakti Yoga is a devotional form of yoga, usually associated with theistic Hinduism. It is therefore focused on faith, love for and worship of a personal god, such as Shiva, Shakti or Krishna. It is taught in key works like the Bhagavad Gita as one of the forms of yoga, and became a major current of Hindu yoga in the second half of the first millennium CE, when it was promoted and celebrated by South Indian poet saints like the Alvars and Nayanars. Forms of bhakti yoga include the singing of hymns, stories and songs kirtan, dancing, prayer, bowing, and performing puja rituals. Ramanuja is of the most important theologians of bhakti yoga, breaking with the Advaita tradition's absolute nondualism and instead arguing for a qualified nondualism. Visistadvaita, which allows for a certain difference between Atman and Brahman and thus it provides a strong theological foundation for devotional theism. Another influential figure of this tradition is Madhva 1238-1317 CE, who argued for a form of dualism between God and soul. The traditions which focus specifically on bhakti as its main yogic practice include Gaudiya Vaishnavism, the Iskan movement and Lingayatism also known as Virasayavism. <laughs> Tantric yoga Samuel states that Tantrism is a contested concept. Tantra yoga may be described, according to Samuel, as practices in 9th to 10th century Buddhist and Hindu seva, shakti, texts, which included yogic practices with elaborate deity visualizations using geometrical arrays and drawings mandala, fierce male and particularly female deities, transgressive life stage-related rituals, extensive use of chakras and mantras, and sexual techniques all aimed to help one's health, long life and liberation. Topic: <laughs> Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga, also called Hatha Vidya, is a kind of yoga focusing on physical and mental strength building exercises and postures described primarily in three texts of Hinduism. Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Svatmarama, 15th century. Shiva Samhita, author unknown, 1500 or late 17th century. Garanda Samhita by Garanda, late 17th century. Many scholars would include the Goraksha Samhita by Gorakshanath of the 11th century in this list. 
Gorakshanath is widely considered to have been responsible for popularizing Hatha Yoga as we know it today. Other Hatha Yoga texts include the Hatha Vyasapadhati, the Hatha Ratnavali, the Yoga Pradipika, and the Sritatvaniti. Vajrayana Buddhism, founded by the Indian Mahasiddhas, has a series of asanas and pranayamas, such as Tumo Sanskrit Kandali and Trul Kaur which parallel Hatha Yoga. Topic. Laya Yoga and Kundalini Yoga Laya and Kundalini Yoga are closely associated with Hatha Yoga but are often presented as being independent approaches. According to Georg Feuerstein, Laya Yoga, yoga of dissolution or merging, makes meditative absorption laya its focus. The Laya Yogan seeks to transcend all memory traces and sensory experiences by dissolving the microcosm, the mind, in the transcendental self-consciousness. There are various forms and techniques of Laya Yoga, including listening to the inner sound. Nada, practicing various mudras like Kacheri Mudra and Shambhavi Mudra as well as techniques meant to awaken a spiritual energy in the body Kundalini, the practice of awakening the coiled energy in the body is sometimes specifically called Kundalini Yoga. It is based on Indian theories of the subtle body and uses various pranayamas breath techniques and mudras bodily techniques to awaken the energy known as kundalini, the coiled one or shakti. In various Shaiva and Shakta traditions of yoga and tantra, yogic techniques or yuktis are used to unite kundalini shakti, the divine conscious force or energy, with Shiva, universal consciousness. A common way of teaching this method is to awaken the kundalini residing at the lowest chakra and to guide it through the central channel to unite with the absolute consciousness at the highest chakra in the top of the head. Topic: Reception in other religions. Topic: Christianity. Some Christians integrate yoga and other aspects of Eastern spirituality with prayer and meditation. This has been attributed to a desire to experience God in a more complete way. In 2013, Monsignor Raffaello Martinelli, servicing Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, having worked for over 23 years with Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI, said that for his meditation, a Christian can learn from other religious traditions, Zen, yoga, controlled respiration, mantra, quoting aspects of Christian meditation, just as the Catholic Church rejects nothing of what is true and holy in these religions. Neither should these ways be rejected out of hand simply because they are not Christian. On the contrary, one can take from them what is useful so long as the Christian conception of prayer, its logic and requirements are never obscured. It is within the context of all of this that these bits and pieces should be taken up and expressed anew." Previously, the Roman Catholic Church, and some other Christian organizations have expressed concerns and disapproval with respect to some Eastern and New Age practices that include yoga and meditation. In 1989 and 2003, the Vatican issued two documents, Aspects of Christian Meditation and A Christian Reflection on the New Age that were mostly critical of Eastern and New Age practices. The 2003 document was published as a 90-page handbook detailing the Vatican's position. The Vatican warned that concentration on the physical aspects of meditation 
can degenerate into a cult of the body, and that equating bodily states with mysticism could also lead to psychic disturbance and, at times, to moral deviations. Such has been compared to the early days of Christianity, when the Church opposed the Gnostics' belief that salvation came not through faith but through a mystical inner knowledge. The letter also says, one can see if and how prayer might be enriched by meditation methods developed in other religions and cultures, but maintains the idea that there must be some fit between the nature of other approaches to prayer and Christian beliefs about ultimate reality. Some fundamentalist Christian organizations consider yoga to be incompatible with their religious background, considering it a part of the New Age movement inconsistent with Christianity. Another view holds that Christian meditation can lead to religious pluralism. This is held by an interdenominational association of Christians that practice it. The ritual simultaneously operates as an anchor that maintains, enhances, and promotes denominational activity and a sail that allows institutional boundaries to be crossed. Islam In the early 11th century, the Persian scholar Al-Biruni visited India, lived with Hindus for 16 years, and with their help translated several significant Sanskrit works into Arabic and Persian languages. One of these was Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Al-Biruni's translation preserved many of the core themes of Patanjali's yoga philosophy, but certain sutras and analytical commentaries were restated making it more consistent with Islamic monotheistic theology. Al-Biruni's version of Yoga Sutras reached Persia and Arabian Peninsula by about 1050 AD. Later, in the 16th century, the Hath Yoga text Amritakunda was translated into Arabic and then Persian. Yoga was, however, not accepted by mainstream Sunni and Shia Islam. Minority Islamic sects such as the mystic Sufi movement, particularly in South Asia, adopted Indian yoga practices, including postures and breath control. Muhammad Ghab, a Shatari Sufi and one of the translators of yoga text in 16th century, drew controversy for his interest in yoga and was persecuted for his Sufi beliefs. Malaysia's top Islamic body in 2008 passed a fatwa prohibiting Muslims from practicing yoga, saying it had elements of Hinduism and that its practice was blasphemy, therefore haram. Some Muslims in Malaysia who had been practicing yoga for years, criticized the decision as insulting. Sisters in Islam, a women's rights group in Malaysia, also expressed disappointment and said yoga was just a form of exercise. This fatwa is legally enforceable. However, Malaysia's Prime Minister clarified that yoga as physical exercise is permissible, but the chanting of religious mantras is prohibited. In 2009, the Council of Alemas, an Islamic body in Indonesia, passed a fatwa banning yoga on the grounds that it contains Hindu elements. These fatwas have, in turn, been criticized by Darul Uloom Dioband, a Diobandi Islamic seminary in India. Similar fatwas banning yoga, for its link to Hinduism, were issued by the Grand Mufti Ali Goma in Egypt in 2004, and by Islamic clerics in Singapore earlier, in Iran. As of May 2014, according to its Yoga Association, there were approximately 200 yoga centers in the country, a quarter of them in the capital Tehran, where groups can often be seen practicing in parks. This has been met by opposition among conservatives. 
In May 2009, Turkey's head of the Directorate of Religious Affairs, Ali Bardakolu, discounted personal development techniques such as Reiki and yoga as commercial ventures that could lead to extremism. His comments were made in the context of Reiki and yoga possibly being a form of proselytization at the expense of Islam. Topic. International Day of Yoga On of December 2014, the United Nations General Assembly approved a resolution establishing 21 June as «International Day of Yoga», following the call for its adoption by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his address to UN General Assembly on 27 September 2014. In suggesting one of the two solstices, Modi noted that it is the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere and that it has special significance in many parts of the world. The first International Day of Yoga was observed worldwide on 21 June 2015. About 35,000 people, including Modi and many dignitaries, performed 21 asanas for 35 minutes at Rajput in New Delhi. The day devoted to modern yoga was observed by millions across the world. The event at Rajput established two Guinness records, largest yoga class with 35,985 people and the record for the most nationalities participating in it—84. See also List of asanas List of Indian yoga gurus List of yoga schools Yoga series Yogis Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>